This is the Instagram account of ABC7 News Bay Area. Obviously, I cannot stand ABC7. They are completely despicable, among the worst. They have the weirdo Epstein Disney Stephanopoulos connection and a handful, a bunch, the great majority of their local reporters are completely in on this weirdo LGBTQ scam. Reggie Aki, notably, I think there's some other guy named Freddie. I mean, it's completely disgusting. And they have some some lady named Tara with a short haircut who's obviously in on the agenda and wants to constantly talk about how Narcan is amazing. It's completely disgusting. But my point is, I think there's a little bit of like a reverse Rona thing going on here. So back in 2020 or even 2021, they wanted you to be super scared and put the death counter on the screen and know that everybody around you is dropping like flies. But in your regular life, if you look at it, you just wouldn't think that. So they constantly push it on you. And here's the opposite, right? Crimes, scams, smash and grabs. It's happening all around you. They're even reporting on it. But you probably really shouldn't worry about it. You should worry about the sun monster and, and driving an electric car. But my name's Eric. This channel is called Report and Opine. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'm absolutely begging you. I'm begging you, please. Come on, please. <laughs> because it would help me a lot and it would cost you nothing. But if you wanted to help me even more and spend a little bit of money, go ahead and buy my book, New York City 2020. Gotham Unglued on Amazon.com. That link will be in the description. And obviously, there are loads of stories, and I'm not pretending that crime is only happening in the Bay Area. That would be completely crazy, but I just don't think it's happening at this level elsewhere, not even in New York. And for the record, we know that loads of other, basically the great majority of news outlets, are completely corrupted, but there is something incredibly despicable about ABC7 Bay Area. So there's just a couple recent stories from the last, I don't know, week or so that I think proves this is extreme. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am completely off base, but some of this stuff is just not going around in other reason, regions of the country. Jose police are urging the victim of a bizarre incident at an ice cream parlor to come forward. Surveillance video from inside a Baskin Robbins in East San Jose on April 26th shows a man and child walking in. Now look closely to the right of your screen. A man runs up and smashes oh, yeah. the window. Uh, shards of glass rain down on the... So just a random man at a San Jose Baskin Robbins breaks the glass in broad daylight with a child on the other side of the window. What in the world is happening? And I think if this if this were going on elsewhere, we would certainly hear about it. And I promise you, I tried. I looked right. But it's just not at this level. The child, the man then leans in and shouts something. Now the incident was never reported, so we don't know how the child is doing. Uh, police didn't learn about it until receiving a tip on May 2nd. Officers arrested the suspect last week. We know that they weren't known to each other, and so we can't speak to the state of the mind of the suspect or what may have led him to do that. We just know it was a dangerous situation. Now the So, so uh, I mean, did he steal anything? What was the goal here? This is just a crazy dope fiend who is probably seeing something completely different than the world around him. Suspect here is 36 year old Pahriam Afsari and is charged with assault with a deadly weapon and child abuse. Police want to talk with the victim to help them fully understand exactly what happened. And I think we can be almost certain that he's not going to face any consequences. And now we have nearly $90,000 heist in Antioch involved money that you may have spent at the Contra Costa County Fair. Police say two fair employees were robbed at gunpoint when they went to deposit the money at a nearby BMO bank after 2 a.m. Monday. And look, everything is so completely corrupt in California. Maybe this was an inside job. I literally have no idea. But it used to, it was at one point, an upbeat story about the fair, which has turned into a robbery. And either way you slice it, if it's actual criminals or if it's an inside job, it's dark either way. The Contra Costa County Fair ended late Sunday night, but it's what happened in the overnight hours after the fair at this BMO bank a mile and a half down the road in Antioch that is raising eyebrows. Two of our employees possibly were taking a very large cash deposit to a bank 
not too far away and were robbed at the bank, not on the fairgrounds. Craig Cannon is the president of the Contra Costa County Fair Board of Directors. He was not the one making the day-to-day -day operations calls at the fair and is now demanding answers. He says nearly $90,000 of fair money was stolen outside this bank, which is located in a strip mall where stores are boarded up and unhoused individuals are living in the parking lot. Oh, oh, unhoused individuals are living in the parking lot. I mean, can it get any more clear that you just can't do business there? I mean, it's just... Things are not handled the way they're supposed to be, and we're going to work on fixing that. But um, you never send an unarmed citizen to a bank at wee hours of the day when the banks don't even open and expect us to make a deposit. A night deposit would be made right here. The only possible camera I could see from here is right there. And police have yet to release any surveillance video. Some community members were angered when we broke the news to them Wednesday night. Yeah, that's Yeah. It is. Are you surprised that somebody would rob somebody else for the money that was made from the fair? I mean, that don't surprise me at all. That's bad. That's really bad. Cannon says the loss of this amount of money could impact the fair's music headliners and animal attractions in the years to come. He says the fair went very well this year without any problems until this happened off property and in a community that has been hit hard by crime. Everybody's free game right now with these criminals, and it's everywhere. Um, Antioch, of course, with the limited police department out there, they have their hands full. The yeah, so, I mean, and they said it in there, oh, this could affect the uh, next year's animal displays or the, the music headliners or whatever. So it, it's pretty clear. And look, you can go to downtown San Francisco and see that's like sort of the epicenter of the the people leaving, and it's obviously going to spread, right? From downtown San Francisco to the rest of the neighborhoods in San Francisco to the surrounding cities, and it's just going to get worse and worse and worse because, I mean, the political regime wants that to happen. And I, I don't know, maybe they are destroying everything so that they can buy a property. Shout out to Bill de Blasio. I think he did that in New York. I don't know what's actually happening, but, oh, we're, we're going to get to the bottom of this. We're going to find answers. Uh, no, you're not. Right. I mean, we, we know what uh, the, uh, the unhoused individuals and, and again, either way you slice it, if an unhoused individual or a stone cold criminal robbed these people of ninety thousand dollars or it was inside job from some of the people depositing the money in the bank at 2 a.m. in Contra Costa, it's a lose lose. And uh, here is another one. Man arrested in unprovoked stabbing of two German tourists in Santa Monica. Now, obviously Santa Monica, not the Bay Area, but it's par for the course in California. Two German tourists were stabbed in Santa Monica, California last weekend. One of those tourists is in critical condition right now. A third victim suffered minor injuries. Now this happened near a parking structure and also near the Third Street Promenade. Police say this was an unprovoked attack. 29 year old man by the name of Larry Sedeno. An unprovoked attack. Okay. So just a random crazy person, kind of like the random crazy person who broke the glass at the ice cream shop and sh sent shards of glass all over a little grill. And I think it's also funny here that this comment in California, new budget makes billions in cuts to mental health, su mental health, substance abuse and rehab programs. Sad. So that person is under the impression that if we just give more money to these crazy people, this type of stuff is not going to happen? I don't think so. I mean, may maybe the money would be better spent actually delivering it to the crazy people than the political regime that is siphoning it through their pockets and bureaucrats all over the place. But again, no matter how you slice it, it is a lose-lose. It's too late. And if they would have done everything right starting yesterday, it would still take a decade has been arrested. Police say he is homeless. And get this, our news partners at ABC7 found that the suspect had been released from jail 10 days prior to the stabbing. He was on probation for carjacking and he has also been in trouble for elder abuse and assault with a deadly weapon. He now faces charges, according to the district attorney, of attempted murder and assault with a deadly weapon. Now, we are going into the Memorial Day weekend, so if you are going out and about, maybe you're traveling somewhere, stay safe out there. Now, uh, what's crazy is that 
that man who had just been released for all sorts of other violent crimes, likely anywhere else in the country outside of New York City, would have still been in jail. Right. And that's obviously part of this problem. It just never ends. And here is a, a, a good one about the Skyline High School in Oakland, where I think Tom Hanks went. I think Gary Payton, Dame Lillard. I know exactly where Oakland uh, or where Skyline High School is. I also know where Oakland High School is. But that's beside the point. They are uh, they have detained two people, not not arrested, but detained a couple people after somebody shot up. A high school graduation in I mean, it gets no more Oakland than that. Right. Like you can't let them have just one day because somebody decides that they, they need. I don't know. I don't know. They hate the cops. They hate each other. They hate the traffic lights. They hate everything and are working hard to destroy it. And the political regime is literally helping them. So they say Oakland police have detained two people after a shooting at Skyline High School Thursday night. They sent two people to the hospital. The principal says it happened just after the graduation ceremony wrapped up. People were taking pictures when somebody started shooting. Just learning that two people were detained and we are working to find out if that will lead to arrests. At last check, a man and woman who were shot were stable at a hospital. We're told this was an isolated incident. You can see the footage, right? It, oh, it was an isolated incident? What, what does that even mean? You're... <laughs> when there's crime all around yeah okay i guess technically the criminals don't know the other criminals but I, it's not isolated it's isolated to to events that happen every single day multiple times a day oh uh, well what does that even mean that oh, well somebody they weren't trying to uh you know murder the entire crowd of graduation goers it was just it was just a fight between two thugs it here shows police cars all over Skyland High School in Oakland yesterday. Now, shooting happened right after graduation ceremonies on campus when some students and parents were still there taking pictures. Police locked down the school initially, getting everyone out of the school. Witnesses describe what happened. They were popping off the little confetti poppers, and I thought it was all cool. And then everyone started running and we saw hella smoke i don't i don't know what happened but it sounded like someone was driving by we saw the smoke heard the popping um it was yeah it was just a series it sounded like someone had an automatic gun at one point we do know there were uh multiple suspects uh but we're trying to identify exactly how many and police also say there were multiple shots and that there were reports of a dispute that they're looking into. The principal of Skyline High sent a message to families saying in part, there is no place for this kind of behavior at Skyline. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is so tragic. Like, I can't believe this happened. We're not going to do this. Like, OK, like, fi fix the problem. I mean, you have the your own the mayor of oakland was obviously completely corrupt gets her car broken into at a movie theater it just never ends and then they throw these platitudes out there like there's no place for this yeah 12th graders had their graduation shot up we must resolve our differences in other ways and not resort to violence to work out problems today's a teacher work day so students are not scheduled to be on campus today but the principal says that staff will be available to any students who need emotional support. We are just learning. Yeah, a little bit of emotional support after their, an attempted murder at their graduation. And here's the last one. $3,000 in merchandise stolen from San Francisco fashion business. A small business owner in San Francisco is asking for help after someone stole more than $300,000 worth of clothing and office equipment. Dare Fashion specializes in goth-style clothing designed and made in San Francisco. On May 1st, owner Ben Wong discovered his office and storage facility along Market Street had been... And again, I'm not blaming this guy. I'm not blaming any of the people except for that dog walker who quite obviously set up a hoax. But it's just not beyond the realm of possibility for an inside job to take place at the, the cash carriers from the Contra Costa County Fair. Right. It's, it's just so muddy. The waters are so muddy that nobody can be taken at their word. Right. It, talk about a low trust society on steroids. Ransack. He says someone broke in and stole countless uh, items and accessories. And uh, right as they were gearing up for. And, and, and just for the record, I mean, we've seen like, for the you know, last six or seven years, we've seen 
hoax after hoax after hoax. Now, most of those were racial. That's why I do not give the benefit of the doubt to that to that stupid dog walker. And I don't know if you remember that story. I did two of them, and I'm going to keep following up on that because I have a sneaking suspicion that they are not going to not going to ever tell us the truth on that. But that's a completely different story. San Francisco's World Goth Festival, too. Wong and his team still attended the event and are now determined to move forward. I give myself 15 minutes to feel sorry for myself, and then I say, okay, now we got a deal. What I'm really trying to do is turn this around and say, how do you make the worst thing that's ever happened to you the best thing that's ever happened to you? What a great attitude and outlook. Wong says he has a $1 million insurance policy on his business, but he didn't realize it was for liability only. He warns others to look closely at their insurance coverage. He set up a GoFundMe to help recoup some of his losses. We have a link on our website, abc7news.com. A small business owner. Okay, well, that's obviously a short list of recent stories. And you can click through several other Instagram or Twitter accounts or Roku channels or whatever of other cities that just aren't dealing with this, right? It's, it's happening a little bit maybe in D.C., New York, Atlanta, but it's just not at this level. And I still maintain the idea that the local news is doing the Bay Area solid by not saying exactly what happened and exactly how often these things are happening.